This program is proudly brought to you by Vet Products Direct, Holistic Select and the Walmart Company. Thanks for joining us for another great episode of All About Animals. Today I have a go at shearing a sheep by Olivia Lodge Dressage from equestrian rider Jaden Brown. So sit back and get ready for another great show of All, All About, About Animals. Animals. Today's native Australian animal is the dingo. Look, they're just so cute. They're mm -hmm. like dogs. Hi, Carrie. What's the difference between these dingoes and a domestic dog? Uh, the difference is the dingo doesn't actually bark. Doesn't it? No. So like our domestic dogs at home that bark in the backyard, the dingo actually howls. And they also molt a little bit different than our own dogs. Our own dogs seem to have a really strong scent unless we shampoo and bath them. But obviously these girls we don't bath, so their scent stays not as strong as our dogs and they don't really molt as much. They look so active. Are they fitter than normal dogs? Um, they are quite fit actually because out in the wild they aren't really a predator. They're more of a scavenger hunter, so they will travel a long way to get their food. Here we find these two girls are only about four years old and they keep each other busy, constantly running. Our fences are around about six feet high here and we have to curve them because otherwise they would clear those fences. Really? That's really high. And aren't dingoes endangered? Uh, quite the opposite in South Australia actually. They made a lot of our livestock endangered in South Australia. So what happened was millions of dollars were spent to put a big fence around to keep the dingoes out and to keep our livestock safe. Okay, so these dingoes are sisters, do they live in families in the wild? Um, they will live in a family, they'll live with their mother and father as puppies and then when they do get a bit bigger and ready to mate, they might move on to make their own family but they do also hunt in packs. So yeah, they will stay together but each individual family does branch off. Well thanks Carrie for sharing the dingoes with me. It's okay, anytime. Well I'm about to take them for a walk, would you like to come? Sure, I'd love to. Let's go. Gee, these are beautiful native Australian dogs. Their coats are fantastic, and it's just like walking a normal dog. But I think it's actually easier than walking my own dog, Candy. Last time, I learned about safety when you're riding. Today, Gary from Bonnets is going to make sure kite saddle fits in properly. Hi Gary. Hi Olivia, how are you going? I'm good thanks, how are you? Good. So what are you going to show us today? Uh, we're going to talk about saddle fitting today because it uh, makes the whole horse riding experience a lot safer and a lot more enjoyable for yourself and for your horse. Uh, and if your horse is happier, it makes your horse healthier. When we're looking at uh, saddle fitting, we look at the, uh, the thoracic part of the spine. Now, the thoracic part of the spine starts from the front of the shoulder, yep. all right, and it goes back to this area here. There's a big bone that runs through here, and it's called the scapula, all right? It's a big bone. It's like a thigh bone on yourself, all right? And it runs all the way up through here. So I want you to just put your hand on there, and so you can feel how hard that is. What we've got to remember is this bone is not connected skeletally to the actual backbone. Okay. All right? So if we actually put pressure on it, we actually squeeze the pony, all right? Okay. So they can't move properly. Uh, I really like these saddles. Um, they've got an easy change gullet system, so uh, you can actually adjust them and change them uh, yourself. To just make sure that you're in behind the back of that shoulder. Okay, because yeah. remember we spoke about earlier, the shoulder's got to be nice and free. All right, if the saddle's sitting up on the shoulder, it's just like if I put your shoulders in a squeeze, you can't move properly. The next thing we look at is the height criteria from the bottom of the saddle channel to the top of the wither. All right, the actual backbone through here. Ideally, what we need is like a minimum of five to seven centimetres. One of the great features of the Techno saddles is that they're nice and soft and flexible through here as well, so they're not going to restrict any of this movement. If that was too low through yep. there, every time you go riding, you'd be banging on the top of that backbone, and then you're going to have an unhappy horse. 
Now when you put your girth on, you just do your back girth point first. When we tighten that, it brings the saddle into the center of the horse's back. Yeah. If we just did the front one first, it tends to pull the saddle down and start restricting the shoulder. Now, when you take your saddle off, yep. it's important that you just slide it back slightly because after you've been riding for a while, it actually forms a seal or a vacuum yep. on your horse's back. So if we just sort of slide it back a little bit, it breaks that seal so that it's just that little bit more comfortable. All right, so we drag that out. So always have a look to make sure there's no scuffing through there. Well, that was great information from Gary. Thankfully, Kite Saddle fits him really well, so I can ride him without worrying about it causing him pain or problems. If you're not sure about your saddle fitting, make sure you contact Bonnets for help. www.bonnets.com.au Now today, I'm chatting to Duncan from Aussie Pooch to learn more about dog washing. Hi Duncan. Hi Jay. So what are the advantages of getting your dog washed professionally than doing it yourself? Well, obviously, if you get somebody else to do it, it's much easier. A lot of people try and wash their dogs in the shower or in the bath. Uh, it can be quite messy. Uh, the convenience of us is we come to your house, do it all. It's nice warm water. Not only do we wash them, we can also clean their ears, clean their eyes and clip their nails. So um, it's sort of like an all-over grooming service. Yeah, yeah. So how long does it take to wash your dog? Uh, roughly takes about half an hour to go through the whole process. Um, so, yeah, it's fairly quick. Yep. So, so you do basically everything? Yeah, and, and some operators also uh, do grooming as well, so clipping the coat. Um, I don't myself, but uh, a lot of other people do. So for those dogs that uh, need that clipping, it's, it's quite an advantage. So how often should I get my dog washed? Well, it does depend on the breed and variety of the dog you have. Um, I recommend to my customers either every two or every four weeks. Every four weeks for those uh, shorter haired dogs and every two weeks for those longer haired dogs or the ones that you know, tend to smell a bit. Certainly not uh, any more than weekly um, because that can start to damage the oils in the coat of the dog. Okay, and how much does it cost? So once again, depends on the uh, breed of your dog. Uh, looking somewhere between 30 and $45. Okay, so can you give us a demonstration? Sure, Jay. You go get your dog and I'll get set up. All right, we'll do. Wow, this is pretty cool. I don't know who's going to enjoy this more, Duke getting professionally washed or me sitting back doing absolutely nothing. Now because he molts a lot, his hair gets pretty scruffy, so Duncan gave him a good brushing all over. He didn't seem to mind one bit. Next he had his nails clipped. Now that's a job I won't miss doing. Then it was into the bathtub. Here we go. The nice warm water was a bit of a change. Sometimes I used to just squirt them down with a cold hose. Somehow, I don't think I'm going to be able to get away with that again. Have a look at that smile. Duncan gave his ears a bit of a clean, wiped his eyes, then out came the blow dryer. This is definitely something I can't do myself at home. One last final towel down, and out he comes, happy and handsome once again. Oh, but wait, there's more. Some sort of aromatherapy spray. He'll definitely be a hit with the ladies now. A dog treat to finish off, and we're done. And I didn't have to lift a finger. Go Aussie Pooch! Now I heard about online shopping for your pets, but wanted to find out how it all works. So we dropped into Vet Products Direct Warehouse to ask Dr Mike. So Dr Mike, how popular is online shopping for pets? Olivia, it's actually really, really popular. So. To give you an idea, this year Australian pet owners will spend over $50 million on Whoa, pet products just wow. online. So that's, that's an awful lot of dog tablets when you think about it. I, I think most pet owners have got an idea about what, what they want to buy. So they find it online, they like the price, it gets delivered, so it's really, really convenient for them. Yeah, well that's great. And what sort of products would they buy? It's, it's the full full range of products. We stock about 5,000 different products and wow, it wow. could be the you know root from really small things like worming tablets, heartworm, flea and tick control, that sort of thing. But we also ship really big products, even your regular needs, like your premium pet food, that can go out as well. So we sell the full range of products, including some really unusual ones, things like dog life jackets and pet nail <laughs> polish, really strange stuff. Yeah. Basically, if a pet owner could want it and we can ship it, then we'll send it. So what happens after they place an order? Interestingly, even though we're an online business, about half of our orders are placed over the phone. I think that's because owners 
sometimes they need a little bit more advice, but I think oftentimes they just really like to talk to people about their about their pets. Yeah. And so when we're taking the orders, all the people who are answering the phones are vet nurses, so they can give good advice as well as recommending a great product. Once the order's in the system, it comes out to the back end. It's not really beautiful, but out here, this is where the action really happens. So we've got guys and girls out here picking and packing. Our goal is to send out that order the same day we receive it. When people are ordering online, they know what they want, but they really want it as soon as possible. Our goal, get it out same day. So how long would it take for it to leave the warehouse to get to their doorstep? It varies. We actually send all around Australia, so it's probably going to depend more on postal time. You know, if you're off in a fairly remote place, that can take two or three days. But um, we're really trying to cut down those times and deliver the products as quickly as possible. So what happens if I need more advice? You know, a lot of people just ring up and talk to our vet nurses, which is really, really convenient. I reckon if you needed some advice, you'd probably go online. There's a couple of different facilities we've got. We've got online chat, and we find that people really like that because they can look back on the answers that the vet nurses have, uh, have given to them. Another facility we've got is where you can ask Dr. Mike a question, so you can actually just uh, send me an email. So usually at the end of the day, I've got a few emails to get back to people about. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's really cool. Well, Dr. Mike, that sounds really amazing. We want to buy our pet products online, so where do we go? Easy. Vetproductsdirect.com.au. Find us online. We've also got an iPhone app, so you can oh, download, cool. download the app. makes it easy for you. <laughs>
We now move on to the first leg. And this is where we get to see the first of the lovely white merino wool. There we go. All the way down over the top of his hip. Just like that. There we go. Along the back of his leg. Let's work our way down to his tail. So haircut time. Alright guys, now this is what we call going up the neck. Now this is the hardest blow on the sheep. Because I can't tell you what my hand piece is doing underneath all the wool. So I've got to go by feel alone. Now guys, this is what we call the long blow. This is where we remove the most amount of wool in the shortest amount of time. The average shearer would shear a sheep like this in around about four minutes. Have a look at that beautiful white merino wool. Four minutes to shear a whole sheep? Gee, I'm not sure if I'm going to be that quick, but I'll give it a good go. Okay, now you come around this side. Now what I need you to do is put that hand on my back so you don't fall over. Yep. Your other hand, put on top of mine. It's on top there, fingers between mine, and here we go. We start at the top, and we work our way down, right down, up over the top of his leg. For more information, go to merino.com. <laughs> oh, hey guys, I just thought of this really cool joke. Really? Okay. Tell. All right, why can't ladybugs hide? Because oh. they're bright? Yeah, because they're really bright. No, because they're always spotted. Oh! You got it? You, yeah, yeah, you get, get it. it yeah. We're here with Sam from SA Dog Rescue to find out about the incredible work they do here. Hi, Sam. How are you going? Good. Where do the rescues come from? Um, most of our rescues actually come out of pounds um, all over South Australia. But we do get some surrenders where people hand them over because they can no longer look after them. OK. So what happens to dogs from there? Well, once they come into our care, they're distributed out between foster carers. So we have to find a foster carer that suits the dog, because not all dogs will suit every household. Some dogs don't like other dogs or they don't like cats. So we need to make sure that the dog's going into an appropriate foster home. And how much does it all cost? Uh, to adopt one of our dogs, it's $390. And that's for all dogs under the age of eight. If they're eight and over, which we class as a senior, then they're 190. And that includes all their vet work. So they get desexed for that, they get microchipped and vaccinated. And Sam, how could someone adopt one of your dogs? Um, people can go online, see our dogs that are up for adoption, um, then send in an email to us, okay. and then we will contact them back. So can anyone adopt a dog? Yeah, anyone can adopt a dog, but we do have a process to put one of our dogs into the appropriate home. So even though someone may apply for one of our dogs, doesn't necessarily mean that they will get that particular dog. Oh, OK. So who's this cute little Suki Terrier? This little terrier is called Lucky, and he came into SA Dog Rescue because his owner actually um, is suffering from dementia, so he can no longer care for him. And how old is he? He's 13 years old. Wow. And he has no teeth. Aww. <laughs> and he's got a sore on his leg where he had a bit of a fight with a cat, we think. Aww. And he's deaf. Oh, poor so, Yeah, he's in a bit of a bad way. Mm, he's up for adoption? Okay. Once he's fit and healthy, then we will put him up for adoption. Oh, that's great. So who's this little guy over here? This is Bob, and he's come from a pound in the country. Oh, OK. okay. Yeah. What's his story? Uh, he was picked up as a stray on the streets, uh, was taken to one of the country pounds, and was never claimed. Oh. So his time was up in the pound and SA Dog Rescue were contacted to see if we could save any of those dogs and Bob was one of those. Oh, wow. So how old is he? He's not even 12 months old yet. Oh, oh wow, he's big. Yeah, so he's still got a bit of growing to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what breed is he? Um, we think he's a bearded collie cross because bearded okay. collies are quite large dogs and he's not going to be as large as one of those. But, uh, yeah. He's got the same sort of coat, all fluffy. Same sort of coat, same sort of face. But not to the eyes. <laughs> yeah, and you can't see the eyes, which is quite common. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam, on behalf of Holistic Slope, we'd like to give you this bag of small and mini breed dog food to help Lucky. Well, thank you so much, Olivia. Oh, that's and okay. by the way, it's got anchovies, sardines and chicken, so it's packed with natural ingredients. Oh, that's great. It certainly is. Those sorts of foods really help with the dog's coats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we'll keep up the incredible work. Thank you. 
So for your chance to win a year's supply of Holistic Slope Pet Food, go to allaboutanimals.tv and enter the competition. Viewer Pets is brought to you by Para Hills Vet Clinic. Yes, it's that time again, Viewer's Pets. I get lots and lots of great photos of your pets emailed in and I love looking through them all. I've picked out a few to share with you, so let's take a look. Our first viewer pet was sent in by 10 year old Annalisa from Seven Hills, New South Wales. Bella is Annalisa's beautiful border collie. She is intelligent and very active. Bella has a cheeky game that she loves to play. When the back door is left open, Bella quickly runs inside, grabs a sock from the floor and dashes into the backyard and waits for Annalisa to chase her for the sock. That would be very funny to watch. Our next photo was sent in by 12 year old Ayana from Snake Valley, Victoria and her Arabian gelding Darcy. Darcy is 21 years old but still gallops around like a little foal. He loves eventing because he's an endurance horse and has a lot of stamina. Darcy makes everyone in Ayana's family laugh when he yawns because he wiggles his tongue a lot. Ayana and her horse have just joined a pony club and are loving it. And last but not least, we have 19-year-old Crystal from Adelaide SA and her dog Muttley. Muttley is a four-year-old Maltese cross papillon. He's very friendly and loves to play with all kinds of animals, even cats and birds. He wakes up every morning at 7am and plays with his favourite teddy that squeaks and if Crystal doesn't wake up, then Muttley will jump on her bed and lick her face. Crystal really loves her beautiful dog Muttley. So to have your pet on our show, just email info at allaboutanimals.tv with three photos of you and your pet, five things about your pet, and your name, age, suburb, and state. And don't forget to enter our awesome competitions. Go to www.allaboutanimals.tv. Jaden Brown is one of Queensland's elite dressage riders. In 2008, he travelled to Germany to represent Australia in the FEI Young Rider Dressage World Cup and he's certainly a superstar in the making. So Jaden, how long have you been riding for? I started riding when I was six years old. I had a little Palomino pony and all of my older sisters were determined to teach me to ride so I just followed in their footsteps and mm -hmm. went to pony club and, and went from there. So what are some of the highlights of your career? Uh, probably I went to the Young Rider World Cup a few years ago in Frankfurt and that was probably my biggest highlight, riding in the old opera hall of Frankfurt with my, oh, wow. my horse, that was pretty fun. So what's your favourite discipline? For me it has to be, has to be dressage, but I, I used to event and, and jump but I swapped over to dressage because I wasn't very good at jumping, so <laughs> stick to something we're good at. <laughs> How long have you had this boy? This horse I've been riding for about a year. His, um, his owner gave him to me to ride because he just grew too tall for her. <laughs> and Jaden, how many horses do you have in work? I have eight horses in work and about six of those are competition horses, so it's wow. pretty busy. <laughs> so how many days a week do you train? I work six days a week and I ride the horses usually five or six days a week as well. And what's this horse's name? This is Colombo and in the stable we call him Lurch. Lurch. And how old is Lurch? Lurch is six years old, so he's a very big horse for such a young horse. So, um, yeah. How tall is he? He's about 17.2 hands, so wow. it's pretty it's big. Massive. Do you work as a riding instructor as well? Uh, yes, I usually do about two days a week coaching away from the property and then one day a week I coach here at Sarova Park. Okay. Now I have trouble keeping Kite's head down. What's the trick? Well, I use lots of small circles to supple them laterally, so from left to right, and also lots of lower leg, and uh, riding them forwards into a, a nice even contact, and that's, that's to, where to start to, to teach them how to go round and become nice and supple and light. Wow. Well, Jaden, it's been a pleasure to meet you. I hope to see you in the Olympics in the future. Thanks, Olivia. We'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for you to visit our website and enter some great competitions for your pet. So, see, see you next time. time.